students now we are going to discuss about macrolides and aminoglycosides so coming to the macrolides so we know what all drugs come under macrolides which include erythromycin roxithromycin clarithromycin telithromycin and azithromycin so other important questions which was asked is uh, which of the following is a immunosuppressant macrolide so that includes tacrolimus so tacrolimus is acts as a immunosuppressant drug because of which uh, it is it is given as a uh, drug of choice and it is under clinical trials for treatment of many autoimmune diseases like pemphigus lichen planus etc so since it's related to oral lesions they can ask which of the following has immunosuppressive action which of the following macrolide has immunosuppressive action or which of the following macrolide can be given in autoimmune diseases uh, so which of the are under clinical trial then you have to go for tacrolimus which is very important okay coming to its mechanism of action it blocks the 50s ribosomes and it blocks the translocation or the unusual rearrangement of the peptide chain from the a site to p site so they can ask whether it blocks the transcription or translocation they can ask that transcription is nothing but it is dna is copied to make an rna okay so rna is formed from dna that is transcription whereas here the macrolide actually blocks the translocation not transcription okay remember that translocation it blocks the translocation okay the other important questions is uh, which of the following is secreted by the bile that is erythromycin and which can be given as a single dose since it has a longer plasma half life azithromycin can be given as a single dose it has almost a half life of 24 hours that's the reason it is given as a single dose okay next is these macrolides actually cause motilin receptor agonists they stimulate the motilin receptors that's the reason they can cause diarrhea okay so the adverse effects include a macro that is motilin receptor agonist allergy cholestasis and reversible ototoxicity so these are the adverse effects of the macrolides whereas the drug of choice or the uses include the claw c stands for chondroid cancroid cornibacterium and campylobacter l stands for lignolella a stands for atypical pneumonia and w is for whooping cough or petrosis so they can ask which of the following is a drug of choice for petrosis or which of the following is a drug of choice for cornibacterium then you have to go for macrolides okay so this chart gives you the brief description of the users the adverse effects and the important aspects related to macrolides so have a note of it so next coming to the aminoglycosides which includes the following drugs that is streptomycin gentamicin canamycin amikacin and tobramycin and topical includes the neomycin and framis framicetin so the major toxic side effects of aminoglycosides includes that it acts on the ears and the kidneys so amongst that ototoxic drugs amikacin among the all the aminoglycosides amikacic amikacin is most ototoxic or it causes maximum hearing loss okay we'll discuss in detail so coming to its clinical uses so uses of aminoglycosides make a note of this uh, this these points which have been uh, given here so coming to that gentamicin tobramycin and amikacin are actually against gram negative organisms including pseudomonas but except salmonella so which of the following drug cannot be given in typhoid so you have to go for aminoglycoside because it doesn't act on salmonella so it cannot be given in typhoid okay and next important point is streptomycin is the first line of drug in tuberculosis we know that so the first line of drugs isoniazid rifampicin pyrazinamide dimethyltryptol and streptomycin so it includes under first line of treatment along with plague and tularemia next is amikacin is a second line of drug in treatment of tb and also used for multi drug resistant tuberculosis so these two lines are very important and nitrimicillin nitrimicin is uh, it can be given in serious infections neomycin can be given topically and also orally for gut sterilization in hepatic encephalopathy and the very important point is pectinomycin which is given as a single dose in penicillin allergic patients suffering from gonorrhea okay so gonorrhea and also for penicillinase producing neisseria gonorrhea single dose aminoglycoside which can be given is a spectinomycin so remember these points which were previously asked so these are the important clinical uses of the aminoglycosides okay and tobramycin is actually less uh, this was a line uh, they have made a note of it in your spurge gupta that is it is much less effective against ent enterocardial 
enterococcal endocarditis when compared to gentamicin or streptomycin. So, tobramycin is less effective. So, they can ask which of the following aminoglycoside is less effective in enterococcal endocarditis and you have to go for tobramycin. Okay. So, make a note of the classification and immediately next to it write the important points related to that particular drug. Okay. So, coming to its toxicity, as I said, it is ototoxic, nephrotoxic as well as neurotoxic. So, it can cause neuromuscular blockade, that is the reason it is neurotoxic. So, coming to the ototoxic, the questions which were asked is which of the following can cause major hearing loss or maximum hearing loss. Then you have to go for amikacin, whereas streptomycin is most vestibular toxic. It can cause more uh, vestibular dysfunction is major with streptomycin, whereas maximum hearing loss is with amikacin. So, remember that. Next in nephrotoxic also, gentamicin is most nephrotoxic okay whereas streptomycin is least nephrotoxic so remember uh, these points which are very very important so they can ask which of the following aminoglycosides is most nephrotoxic which of the following is most ototoxic which of the following is most vestibulotoxic then you have to have an idea so make a note of it okay and next is a neuromuscular blockade because it acts inhibits the presynaptic release of the acetylcholine and decreases the sensitivity of the pre -post uh, postsynaptic receptors. So that is the reason it causes a neuromuscular blockade. So remember that. So these are the important points related to the side effects or the toxicity of the aminoglycosides. So have a note of this these important points okay and remember one thing reversible ototoxicity is with macrolides whereas irreversible or ma uh, ma majority is irreversible ototoxicity ototoxicity is with aminoglycosides you can have a look ototoxicity it's largely irreversible so whereas reversible is with macrolides even that is important so note uh, what all you feel is also important note exactly adjacent to that particular drug in your classification so it will be helpful in your final preparation okay so again uh, you have to have an idea like what all act on 30s ribosome and what act on 50s ribosome so by at 30 so at 80 by at 30 rupees that is 80 that is aminoglycosides and tetracyclines acts on 30s ribosomes whereas the others that is cell at 50 you can buy at 30 and sell at 50 so these act on 50s ribosomes so remember the streptogram means the erythromycin, the linozelazid and the clindamycin and the chloramphenicol act on the 50S ribosome. So, buy at 30, sell at 50. Remember this which is a mnemonic for uh, which acts on 30S and 50S ribosome. So, have a note of it. Okay. Thank you students. This is a brief discussion.